coming up on Beavers All Access. Go Beavers! OSU gymnasts continue to climb the national rankings, while Beavers will invade the pool at the NCAA Swimming Championships. And we'll wrap up the season on the hardwood. Wesley, good pass to Jones at the rim for the two-hand jam. So take your seat. Beavers All Access starts right now. From the Big River Restaurant in downtown Corvallis, this is Beavers All Access. Here's your host, Todd Mansfield. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Todd Mansfield. Glad you're joining us. We have got one of those really large shows today. In fact, we've got four coaches joining us. We're going to talk gymnastics, wrestling, men's basketball, and women's basketball. But before we get to that, I want to take you around the horn, if you will, because we've got to tell you about some great things happening with different sports right here at Oregon State University. The Beaver swim team is headed to the NC2A championships this week, and for the first time in school history, they're sending a relay team. Oregon State qualified a team for the 800 free relay by shattering the school record by almost eight seconds at the Pac-10 championships last month. This weekend, Sari Haraguchi will swim in three individual races, while Anna Crandall and Brittany Iverson have qualified for two events. Kayla Rawlings will join Haraguchi in the 200 fly and join her three teammates in the relay. The NC2A championships run March 8th through the 10th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Log on to osubeavers.com each day for updates and results. In his first season as OSU head coach, Jim Zaleski led the Oregon State wrestling team to the Pac-10 championship last weekend. And seniors Jeremy Larson and Ty Watterson won individual conference titles as well. In all, six Beaver wrestlers have advanced to the NC2A championships in Detroit, Michigan, March 15th through the 17th. We'll hear from head coach Jim Zaleski and his two Pac-10 champs a little bit later in the show. And the much-anticipated home opening series of the defending national championship baseball team is this week. The team will take to the newly upgraded infield, and fans will see a new video board as well. If you can't make it to the park, you can watch the game on the Internet with a subscription. Log on to osubeavers.com for more information. You sign up today, and you can get a 2006 College World Series DVD as a free gift with your subscription. You know, so overall, this thing, it not only looks great, but what a run that was by the baseball team. And I'm now joined by LaVonda Wagner, women's basketball coach. And coach... That looks pretty good. Huh? That looks great, actually. I, I really, uh, I really like that. I'm very proud of our baseball team, and you know, uh, Coach Casey and his team showed everyone in Beaver Nation that it is possible to win a national championship here in Corvallis, and that really excites me. Yeah, it certainly does. You know, this past week, of course, the basketball team was down in uh, California, Pac-10 tournament. Coach, let's jump back to that real quickly. Uh, you guys had a tough game against Arizona. We did. We had a very tough game against Arizona. They played very well. Unfortunately for us, uh, we didn't take care of the basketball. We turned the ball over quite a bit during that game, and it cost us. But what a great season that we had with those young kids. And really, uh, we lacked size and we lacked depth, but we didn't lack heart and hustle. That's right. And talking about some of that heart and hustle that came from everybody on the team, but three really stood out, and finally the Pac-10 said, yes, it did. Let's start with Casey Nash. I mean, here's a player who everybody knew this was the option, and yet what she did this year, simply amazing. Casey Nash, what do you say about her? She uh, did a fantastic job for us this year. She's the Pac-10's leading scorer, and uh, she's our leading scorer, and she went from averaging seven points and seven rebounds last year to 20 points and six rebounds this year. A phenomenal jump, and really, we needed that in order to be successful, and I was very proud for her and very happy that she was recognized. Yeah, and she's a first-team All-Pac-10. That says it all right there. That does. It says it all. And uh, she deserves that award and really had to be that leader for us to be successful. Now, let's go to the freshman class because, again, the last freshman to be on the all-freshman team from Oregon State was Casey Bunn before she was Casey Nash, and now it's Judy Lomax. Judy Lomax, 5'10", uh, from the East Coast, 
was our dominant post player inside this year. Uh, really did a fantastic job of, of getting to the rim and finishing and led the conference in field goal percentages made and made the all-freshman team. And I think her future with us is very bright and also was a great rebounder for us. Mercedes Box Griffin leads the league in assists. <laughs> what do you say about her? I mean, last year as a freshman, she got limited time. And this year, she really came out on the floor, distributed the basketball, took care of the basketball, ran our offense very well, was our playmaker, uh, was able to get to the rim off the dribble and did some fantastic things for us all year long. Two of those three going to be back in 08. That's where we are right now. Can we talk about some of these players that you're bringing in to continue stepping up this program? You know, right now, four of the five players that we signed in the early signing period are still playing. You've got Alex Mitchell, a 6'4 post player in Berkeley, California, who is still playing and, and looking to get into the state championship final game. you got Cassandra McAllister, you know, from the San Jose Midi area, Archbishop Midi, a fantastic basketball team. Her backcourt teammate, uh, Daniel Robinson, has signed to go to Oklahoma. So they're very, they're very good basketball team. They're still playing. And then you have Talisa Ria up in Alaska, who's really done a fantastic job. The two-time Alaskan Player of the Year that hasn't been done in a while. So we're very proud of these young women, and we, and we need their help. That's right. And you get a chance maybe this week, if you want, keep an eye on the local papers, find out where they're playing so you can go out and see what is going to be right here next year in Corvallis with head coach LaVonda Wagner. It was fantastic here. I love being a part of it. Thanks for being a part of the hey, show. Hey, thank you. Did a great job for us, and, and thank you to the community of Corvallis for supporting this team. That's right. And we will get to do it again in 08. For LaVonda Wagner, I'm Todd Mansfield. We'll take a break. Be back in a moment. Up next on Beavers All Access, Jay John and the Beavers are headed to L.A. for the Pac-10 tournament. Two OSU gymnasts battle for the top spot in the Pac-10. And we'll meet two seniors who want to say goodbye with style. Don't go away. More Beavers All Access is straight ahead. Welcome back to Beavers All Access. Here's Todd Mansfield. We continue on. I'm joined by Jay John, the men's basketball coach. It is Pac-10 Championship Pac -10 Week. Yep. This is a good time. It's an exciting time. And you guys get a take on Cal. Here's a team, 2-10 and ten in their last 12, and you guys have been right there with in both opportunities this year. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's accurate. At our place, lost by three overtime down there, and, and uh, um, I feel our guys, I mean, that's, it was either Cal or Washington. And you know, certainly, we, in our guys' view, and our view, we got we got uh, back at Washington at our place, and, mm -hmm. and and certainly we have another chance at, at Cal. I think is something that our guys are looking forward to. Let's talk about how your team has really stepped up second half of the season. You mentioned you've been right there with Cal. You took down Washington. This team has really, in its youth, started to step forward. If, if we could start the Pac-10 over again, we would come out with a better record than what we just had. It's just, it's just a matter of if, if, if guys were going to keep working and keeping their mind in it and investing into development and co competition, that we were bound to get better. To, to go down to the Pac-10 with this group, and, and, you know, win, beat Cal would be a real big thing for, you know, our, our, our young guys, just to, like how they fit into the league, you know, how they fit. And, and they feel real good about that. And you get another crack at UCLA then. That's right. And no matter how that turns out, that experience carried over with some of the new players that are coming on board this offseason could make a really big and more marked improvement for Oregon Well, I, and I feel that. I mean, that's what we've, you know, we are... Uh, almost like rebuilding a second time. You know, the, the, on the front end, we loaded with with transfers and junior college kids. This time, we're trying to do it with with uh, young kids. I feel the energy uh, of us building. I think the guy, the young guys, feel good about how they've played and closed. Going down and beating Cal, is, that's you know, it's it would be a significant thing for the guys. They don't look probably look at it that way, but I know that in time over time, they'll feel good about that and. They're also going to have a chance yeah. to grow this summer. They're going to Italy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, we are going to go down there. And, and so we'll, what that will allow us to do in the summer is we're going to get, we'll get 10 practices, mm -hmm. which should be valuable. Now, the, the new guys, they can't practice or travel, but they'll be around to, to watch. Um, C.J. Giles can practice, but he can't play. And Lathan Wallace, who, who redshirted this year, he can practice and play. 
plus the other young guys. So, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, we get that, they get the 10 practices, we get the six games, uh, a couple weeks off, and we're back for, we're back for the start of things in September, and so we're going to get like a little mini season in there, and, and that's, that's going to be really, that's going to be a key deal, I believe, because it'll, it'll just, you know, spill into October when we get started again, and, and, um, you know, I, I like how it's setting up. Exciting times, lying in wait for Oregon State and men's basketball, including the game that's coming up this week against Cal, first round of the Pac-10s. Coach, good luck. Yeah. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Coach Jay John joining us there. We'll take a break. Be back with much more in just a moment. Coming up on Beavers All Access, Oregon State has six wrestlers headed to the NCAA championships. He goes, I'll, I'll train a national champion. I'm not going to train you to take second. And the Beavers gymnastics team is preparing for the big showdown. Beavers All Access rolls on in a moment. Beavers All Access is brought to you by Standard TV and Appliance and by Big River Restaurant, where you can enjoy Rhapsody in the Vineyard. A five-course winemaker dinner on Friday, March 9th. Call today. Seating is limited. From the Big River Restaurant in downtown Corvallis, here's your host, Todd Mansfield. Joining me now is Jim Zaleski, the men's wrestling coach, and uh, we've got a lot of things to get to because it has been an exciting season. You are sending a plethora, if you will, of players to the NC2A championships. Let's talk about that. That's coming up. It's an exciting time. No, this is what we've trained for all year. You know, six, you know, we got six guys going to the national championship. Uh, this is what it's all about. You know, this is what wrestlers train for. You know, the Pac Tens were important for us, but this is a tournament you want to go and do something at. So, you know, we haven't had an All American in since about four or five years. So, you know, we got six guys going there. The, you know, the goal is to try to win a national championship. And the only reason you change your goal is if, you, if something happens along the way. But that, that's the goal is to go there and win the national championship. Well, you know, one of the things being at Coach Zaleski's first year, there was a lot of pressure. You had a very talented team, but this team has really backed it up. No, they have. They, they've, they've, they've been a fun group to coach. You know, the coaches, you know, new coaching staff, you know, coming in, you know, how they react. They reacted well for us, you know, accepted us, worked hard, been very coachable, and they've been very fun to coach. So at the NC2A tournaments, you know, everybody's seen here in Guild what a wrestling meet looks like. What does it look like at the NC2As? You know, you have eight mats going on. And so you have eight mats going on. There's yelling and screaming because this match, somebody might get a pin over here. There's yelling over here. So really for a wrestler, you really have to focus focus on your mat. You know, you can't be aware of the you know, surrounding what's up, what's what's going on this mat, what's going on that mat. When you, and in fact, I think a lot of my guys in the arena. The only time I want them in the arena is when they're competing, because sometimes you so you start looking around and you start get thinking too much about what's out there instead of what's on the mat. So you got to take it. You got to concentrate on your focus on that mat that you're on, and that's all you got. Your focus has to be right there. This particular group, as they head off towards that NC2A championship, let's talk about some of them. Maybe some of the individuals who's leading the way for this group. Well, right now you look at the two Pac-10 champions. We had uh, Jeremy Larson at 174 pounds and Ty Watterson at heavyweight. Those two guys have probably been our most consistent guys during the year. Uh, they've beat some guys nationally, so you know we're looking for those guys to kind of be the leaders of going to this group. They were at nationals last year. You know, haven't had the success there that yet they've wanted to, but this is their senior year. They're wrestling real good right now, so they've got to be our leaders. It was an exciting time, and it's been an exciting year for all of the wrestling team. And we're going to talk now to two of them who really have an opportunity to look back in Jeremy Larson and Ty Watterson on how important and how much they enjoyed that Pac-10 championship. I had, had been there the, the two previous years and ended up second. Last year I actually lost to the, the same kid I, that I beat this time. So, I mean, it meant a lot to be able to, to go in there and, and those last seconds were taking off the buzzer realizing I was going to actually be a Pac-10 champion. All that work that we put in over the, you know, the last five years, not to mention, you know, just looking back on this season alone, the work we put in this season has paid off. And that was just ecstatic and then being able to realize that I've or as a team, help our team get that much closer to winning the, the title as a team. It was just total elation. It actually kind of took me back to like my high school state tournament um, when I won my you know first state championship my senior year. It uh, it just kind of seems like you know no way you know because you always dreamed about like Pac-10 championships, state championships as a high schooler, and then you know once you got like you know 10 seconds left I think and the width of you know and I was like wow. You know, this would be pretty nice to be able to, you know, say I'm a Pac-10 champ. So I think, uh, you know, it just seems kind of surreal, and it's 
fun though. It's a good feeling. I mean, you know, once that final whistle blows and you know, it's yours, no one's gonna take it away from you. So all the hard work you put into it, just it's nice. Finally paid off. With a Pac-10 championship in tow, Oregon State Wrestling is back. Under the leadership of first-year head coach Jim Zaleski, the grapplers know this is just the first of many positive steps. He's a three-time national champion, and he's had a lot of success as a coach at Iowa. He's won, I think, three or four national, you know, team national championships. So, yeah, I mean, that helps when you know a guy has been there. He's had the, the guys, he's coached the guys to that stuff, and not just once, but multiple times. He knows what it takes, and he knows you know, individual wrestlers and how to get the, the best out of them. So that's, you know, that's a huge part, knowing that, that, that he's got that, that background. We set our goals early last spring for what we want to do this year, you know, as him, as he was just coming in as a coach. And uh, I put in there, you know, I want to be in the, in the, in the national finals. And he, uh, he actually called me a couple days later and he goes, I'm just uh, reading your goals here. I don't think you want to be in the finals, do you? Don't you want to be a national champion? He goes, I'll, I'll train a national champion. I'm not going to train you to take second. So definitely right there, you know, turn, turn your mind frame around and, you know, that's what you're shooting for. I mean, no matter who's out there, any, anybody can have a good, good day, you know, and you can beat anybody on a good day. So that's what you're looking for. My goal is to get into the NCAA finals. I'm wrestling really well right now, and I'm excited to go back there and, and get, in, get into some fights with those guys. You know, a lot of, a lot of people throughout the nation are going to, you know, remember you for taking the first Pac-10s. They're going to remember you for taking, you know, whatever you placed in 2007 back in Detroit. So definitely what we're looking for. Yeah, being a Pac-10 champion is great, but I think you know, being a national championship, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what you train for. You know, having the experience of being there before, so there's nothing like it, because that's the goal you've dreamed about your whole life. So I think these two guys got a great shot. You just you got to go out and wrestle complete matches. And Coach would know about it three-time NC2A champion, so you know about what it takes and plan to lead them there in the upcoming weeks. It's what it takes, and I think they're, you know, the most important thing I think I told them all year, they're prepared to do it. Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Coach Jim Zaleski, the head wrestling coach here at Oregon State, Pac-10 champions, and now on their way to the NC2As. Coming up next on Beavers All Access, OSU's top two gymnasts battle to lead the pack. While the rest of the team is flying high, there's more Beavers All Access after the break. Associate head coach of the women's gymnastics team, Michael Chaplin. Michael, thanks for coming on board. We appreciate it. Your guys as a team right now, you got it rolling. 196, 197. You have been having three great weeks in a row. Yeah, we're really excited about it. The team has been performing well on the road, and that's really what, what counts because you have to count those, those war, uh, away scores more than your home scores. And so we got another 196 at uh, Boise State. Um, we have a, a meet going to BYU this weekend. Um, we want to get another 196 and keep climbing up the rankings. Right now we're currently ranked 10th, and uh, we're hoping, I know the team's goal is to be in the top eight, and so we're definitely uh, heading in that direction. Why are you guys hitting 196s, and why are you guys doing so well? Well, two of them we know, Jamie and Tasha. Uh, Jamie and Tasha are great competitors. They're also good friends, but uh, when they step out on the floor, they want to win, you know, and, and they want to win for themselves, but they also want to help the team out, and they've done a great job this year. Uh, Jamie was a Pac-10 gymnast a couple weeks ago, and then Tasha won it. We're going to put Jamie up again. Maybe she'll win it again this week. We'll see. <laughs> that would be nice. Just keep flip-flopping flip those two right. the rest of the way. We can't forget about Mandy Rodriguez. Here's a freshman who is right on their tails. She's an excellent freshman that has done a tremendous job. Um, she, I wouldn't be surprised if she uh, doesn't catch them one of these meets and, and win it all around. So we're really pleased with her performance and how well she's uh, pushing those two and, and helping the team out to get the big scores. Well, certainly good things are happening for the gymnastics team. Now, maybe you haven't had the opportunity to see them just yet this season. People get a chance coming up because it's the Sebastian Sweets invitation. March 16th, we're going to have a great meet. The University of uh, Utah, they're currently ranked 7th in the country, are going to be here. 
Um, Washington and Seattle Pacific will be here as well. Again, we want to have a great meet. I think our, our Jamie and Tasha are going to go out and show off uh, in front of our home fans. And if people really want to see a good competition where we're trying to push it and get into the into that top seating, seating, uh, this is a big good meet to come out and watch. You know, and the great thing about it is it's not necessarily about winning the meet or winning or beating another team. It's about getting your score. That's what I love about gymnastics. It's about getting your best score. Those that get it have the opportunity to move on. Exactly right, and that's what we're shooting for. We always tell them you got to just think about yourselves. Don't worry about the other teams. Worry about getting the good score, and then the rest will take care of itself. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys have a ways to go in the sense of this season because there's a lot of opportunities. We wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it. We uh, hope everybody comes out and uh, supports uh, our gymnastics team. Yep, Coach, it is a very exciting time for women's gymnastics right now at Oregon State. Again, you heard about it on the 16th. It is the Sebastian Sweets Invitational. Come on out and see some great gymnastics inside Gill. We hope you join them then. For Coach Associate Head Coach Michael Chaplin, I'm Todd Mansfield. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time with another edition of Beavers All Access.